Now we're gonna do the safety operation on the surface grinder. What's rule number one? Keep hands and face clear of moving parts. Okay, it says hands and face because usually when you run on the surface grinder, you're getting in really close to have a look, okay? So just make sure you keep your hands and face clear of the moving parts. Where are the moving parts? Once again, it's simple. Right here. That's it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the surface grinder is probably the dangerous, most dangerous machine in the shop. That's why I have it in the back corner over here because it can throw pieces off here. This thing's spinning extremely fast. The rotations per minute are amazingly quick. If you get your hands on this, it won't actually cut your hands. It'll burn the skin off of your hands or your arms or whatever it is you touch. And then there's really nothing left to stitch up. So it's a very dangerous machine because it burns the skin off, much like the belt sander. So dangerous machine, use extra caution when you're using this machine. So keep hands clear of moving parts. It's the wheel there that spins. Number two. Always be sure magnetic chuck is turned on and workpiece mounted securely. Okay, so the chuck, unlike the other uh, machines, is like the vise and the chuck. It looks different. This is the chuck right here. So when you put your workpiece on it like this, you have to make sure you turn the magnetic chuck on and it holds it down with a magnet. So you give it a little budge test and the magnet's holding the piece down. You have to make sure you do your budge test, make sure it's clean, and make sure the mag chuck is on. Okay, number three. Always move the wheel to the far back left while setting up or adjusting your work. Once again, I went and did that without moving the wheel to the back left. Anytime you do any kind of a setup, the wheel should be back over there when you're doing your setups in here like this. Rule number four. Always check the grinding wheel before mounting it to be sure it is free from cracks or a ring test. Okay, so the ring test. This is important even if you guys have a grinder at home and you're going to buy a grinding wheel at Canadian Tire or something. When you pick the wheel up off of the, uh, off of the shelf, what you want to do to make sure it doesn't have any cracks in it, because if there's micro cracks in here, when you fire it up, the centrifugal forces will push out and the wheel could explode. So you want to make sure it doesn't have any cracks in it. And the way to do that is to put your finger through the hole like this, take a non-metallic object. So if you're at Canadian Tire, you take the wheel, go over to the hammer aisle, grab a hammer with a wooden handle on it, and you tap the wheel to make sure it makes a ring noise. If you listen very carefully, hopefully this uh, camera will pick this up. It makes a ring noise. If it had cracks in it, it would sound like this. Listen to the difference, ready? So that ping noise or that ring noise ensures there's no cracks in the wheel before you mount a new wheel onto it. Okay, rule number five. Always keep face of wheel evenly dressed. Okay, so if you can get in here, this is the face of the wheel right here. These are the sides. You have to make sure this face is evenly dressed, meaning you clean it off with a diamond dresser, which we'll talk about shortly. Make sure that this face is evenly dressed along there. You don't want it in any kind of an angle or you'll have a problem when you go to grind your piece. Okay, next. Always clean magnetic chuck with palm of hand to remove dust. Okay, so you can see it's kind of good that this is on here. Right here, these are the chips that are made from the surface grinder. They're not actually big chips that you would make with a mill or a, or a drill press or a lathe. So to get those off there, you need to clean that off with the palm of your hand. Once again, this is why I like to wear the apron because then you can take this dirt and grease, this grease that's on your hand and wipe it off on the apron. But before you begin, you wipe this off, make sure it's nicely wiped off. And then what else do I need to wipe off? Jake, what else do I need to wipe off? My workpiece. My workpiece needs to be wiped off as well. Uh, Jake was a little out of focus there, but that's okay. We'll wipe this off like this. On it goes, everything's clean, good setup, no chips underneath. If you can imagine, let's say this was a chip. I know this is way exaggerated, but that's what a chip does to your workpiece. And it doesn't enable it to clamp down all the way. So you have to make sure everything's clean from underneath there so it sits down nice and flat. And the next one. Always check to be sure wheel clears your work before starting grinder. Okay, so if we get to the point where grade 11s, we'll say, are all grinding their base, everybody's base is roughly the same thickness. So what could happen is as you're going to go and grind your piece, it might be sitting like this. And you might say, hey, that looks like it clears my workpiece. And then as it comes over, and if you're just going to bring it right in, 
look it, it does not clear the workpiece at all. And it will create all kinds of havoc, big problems. So make sure it clears. And a way to do that is always to raise the grinding wheel, come over your workpiece, and then come down onto it to make sure it clears it before you begin. What's next? Always stand to one side when starting the grinder. Just to, to stand clear of possible wheel breakup. So we haven't used this thing for two years, we'll say. We come in, we fire it up. If I start it, where's the wheel gonna break up? It's gonna bust and fly out both these directions here. So you never wanna stand right here, which is strange because this is where the start button is. You don't ever wanna stand here and turn it on because it's gonna blow up, it's gonna come right this way. So as you turn the grinder on, you wanna stand over here and fire it up that way. Then if anything is gonna go wrong, it'll all go out this way. Most people should understand that if anything is gonna go wrong, usually it goes wrong right at the beginning. It never goes wrong usually midway through, your, through as you're working. Once you're working and things are going well, it usually doesn't go wrong then. What's next? Always be sure all guards are in place. Okay, so this is a guard here for the wheel. Jake, grab that guard off that mill right there. This is one guard right here that goes on there to guard the wheel. And we have another guard in the shop as well that we've been transferring back and forth between two machines. Make sure that this guard is here in place as well when you're using the surface grinder. That way, anything that flies off there is gonna hit the guard first and it'll, you'll have a chance to back up and get away from it, okay? Next. Never take more than a .0005 inch cut with the grinder. So that's a five ten thousandths cut. So not five thou, five ten thousandths. If you look at this handle here, each one of these lines is, I thought I would say it on there somewhere, but it doesn't. Each one of these solid lines is one thou, two thou, three thou. So these lines in the middle are half thou or five ten thousandths. So as you go to cut, you're gonna go from this, this will be your next cut right there, one five, or five ten thousandths of a cut. So point zero, 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 five. So three zeros, then the five. And what's next? Always start on the thickest or high side of your work and work your way down. So the thickest piece of your work. So you always start on the thickest piece of your work and then work your way down. So how do I know where the thickest part of this work is? Jordan, how would I know where the thickest part is? Just measure it. You're going to just measure it. So you're gonna take the piece, you're gonna take a mic here, so if it says 502, 501, and 500, you start at the 502 part. That way, if you started on the 500 part, and you went over and it got thicker, it's gonna go and take a big cut here. You start at the thickest part and work your way down. So just measure it. And what's next? When dressing the wheel, be sure the diamond dresser is at least a quarter inch past the center point of the grinding wheel. Okay, so we have a diagram for this that you should have drawn down, okay? What this means is this. This here is a diamond dresser. Now don't go stealing my diamond dresser, run to the pawn shop, think you're gonna get a million bucks for a diamond. It's a refined piece of diamond in here that helps you <clears throat> grind the wheel. When you put this on here like this, you need to make sure <clears throat> that it's at least quarter to half inch past center. So you could probably see right now that this would be right on center. I wanna make sure it's back on this side of center, not on this side. If it was on this side right here, Carter, I'll ask you this question. If it was on this side, what would happen if it came towards the wheel? It would get pulled into the wheel and it could cause the wheel to explode. Okay, so if you come back over here and look, like Carter said, if I had this all the way down, I'm gonna bring it out a little bit, like this, and it got caught into the wheel that's spinning like this, it's gonna pull it into the wheel, and it's gonna bust the bottom part of the wheel off and explode it. That's why, oops, that's why we wanna always dress it on the back side of the wheel. That way, if it, if it grabs or anything like that, it's just gonna push it away, and there'll be no harm, no foul. Okay, do I have any questions on the surface grinder?